so here we are here guys i have scraped out i've cut out i've kind of um got out as much as i could and i want to make sure that bit down there was solid it's definitely the bit at the end so now i have to build this profile back up and so the window sill is gone the bottom rail is gone the corner sections are gone the jams are gone on both sides and you can even see the glazing bar is totally gone on both sides so you can see what the thing there is so i need to put a couple of coats of wood hardener on this make sure it's all rock solid i also then need to check out this little gutter joint and just make sure that this is all waterproof because i don't want this to reoccur uh, and then i need to start building back up this profile i'm very 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 lucky <laughs> this little out piece here right will allow me to get a corner piece i can build off this in both directions and i still need to get this profile right and i still need to get this one here right as well and this one coming down here so it's a fair bit of fair bit of work in this and um, probably one of the worst i've ever seen to be honest with you but there's no need to rush in and we can build it back up slowly that's the beauty of it there's no there's nothing that needs to be done we can just give it time and take it up slowly okay thanks guys and you can see i had to cut in to make sure that I got back to good levels, differential, different sizes. But all this is going to disappear when it's covered up. Thanks. So, this has had five wood hardeners and I've now coated it with the aluminium primer as well. Uh, maybe it needed, maybe it didn't, but it's certainly better to err on the side of caution and give it as much protection as it can. And... Uh, this is the second coat here so what I want to do is really let this sink in over the weekend and uh, then we can start to go with it okay so guys I am about to fix this wood rotten at this stage it's got an aluminium primer plus uh, about four or five wood hardeners so it's well solidified at this stage you can even feel well I, I can feel that it's hardened up at this stage thankfully so what I'm going to do is a couple of different ways to do about this some people may fill these areas in here first but I'm actually going to fill the window uh, ledge. And I'm going to take, I know that I'm going to build up this gap and I'm going to build up this corner first and make sure it's level from both sides and then work backwards in on the slope. And then I'll actually go with the main timber work itself then. Okay. Just a lot. So I've got a little bit of scope here. I've got a little bit of definition back in here. I'm working my way down 
Um, this is still a little bit high, but at least now I can kind of work off the base and I can start to work from my way up now as well. Need to make sure I get this definition. So I may cut a little bit of timber or I may do it with a, a I may build it up and put a blocker or something so I get this right and then I get this right. So I'll see which one suits best. Okay, and then I can start to flush fill the, the top sections as well. And if you look, if you look down, you'll see this is slightly lower than, <coughs> than the rest of the sill here and there. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing considering that it is a sill and you want a bit of runoff. But I want to make it slightly higher, okay? So we kind of got the form back and we're just playing around with details at the moment. We're still still a little bit off though. If you look at the level. Look, there's level. So we've still got a little bit to come up. And the same here as well. So we got to play around with this corner. You can see it a fair bit then. And you can see we're level here as well. That's level there. So we just need to play with this angle as well. And the same out here. But it's very, very, very little. It's just, just actually at the edge. So I'm going to build this up slightly and play with the two edges again. And then this detail down here and one or two little bits. So it's it's down to small little stuff, which can be done another day as well. It doesn't all have to be done today. We can let it dry out from whatever. A little bit of rain due. So I'll get as much done as I can. But we're nearly there. So, nearly there, just a tiny little bit of playing around with the edge and one or two little indentations. So, I'm going to do that when it's completely dry again. You can see a little bit of sand in there. Uh, so, that's where we are. At this stage, were structurally done and if you get a little bit closer you'll see some little nuggets along there but there's rain dew so what I want to do is I want to get this sealed up I'm going to put an aluminium base primer on it uh, and then after that those small little adjustments just part of the normal painting repair uh, ongoing cycle so here's just a an aluminium, <coughs> an aluminium place primer on it so that'll soak in so in terms of deviance you can see this needs to be sanded there 
right? Just small little sands. This area here doesn't look great. But these are only small little things. A light little sand, one or two little hairline little flakes. But in terms of structure, maybe a little bit of filling out here, a little bit of playing around. So let's do an acid test and we will compare with the other one. The one that was in pretty good nick. So only a minimum amount of repairs here. And I need to sand these off. I've oversized this so I can sand it back and we can get an edge. So there was only a little bit of rot there. Uh, so we're pretty good at that. Yeah, I think this compares favorably. I'm going to take a picture of the two of them once we get to them to the same level and we can compare them at the end. So it's had a primer and it's had an undercoat and it still needs still needs the repairs done. You can see that. You can see that kind of pretty obvious there and you know there's one or two little small ones but a little bit of caulk and a little bit of filler. We'll look after that. You can see little nudgings there, just need a little bit of remnants of paint probably on the brush and small little ones. And you can see this guy, this guy up here, but there are <coughs> things that can be taken care of in a minute or two. And around here looks a lot better too. I might try and, well I will, I'll try and put that profile back in. I, I thought I did a better job, but you can see there's a shadow of it, but I think it'd be nice to actually get that totally back in there. So I'll try and get that one back in and here as well. So I gotta fill gotta fill this one, gotta fill this one, and I'd like to take that profile down. And I'll take a picture of the far side just so I get it right, and then I'm gonna put a bit of caulk back in here. But from here, you can see they're kind of minutia things. Uh, most important thing is that the sill has a drop off where water can come off. I think that that could have been half of the problem that water was pooling and going back in and coming back up. Because I checked up above and it didn't look bad in terms of the roof, the gutter. If, if it was coming from up above there would have been some damage either on the inside or up above and there wasn't. So it was all starting down here and I think the water was pooling and it was going back in. Uh, I think it was sitting, getting into the sill, moving along the sill, and then the rot was going into the corner as well. So, uh, getting trapped by, by uh, going underneath the paint in certain areas, sticking there, and then it was kind of germinating back inwards. So. So, here's the section here. It's, uh, had another flush fill and you can see the edges are an awful lot better than they were. 